in a land where corn is king, farmed by America's best, and every bushel matters. Corn Warriors, it's personal. Oh, I think the Corn Warriors. It's gonna be pretty interesting this year. Yeah, that corn there, this is a disease. It's called sprayer blight. Do you understand? As far as blights go, it, that's one you really don't want. Yeah. This is probably true sprayer blight here. It's where the sprayer ran over it. It's called sprayer blight. So we need a better sprayer operator. Another growing season is underway at Renwood Farms. And David Hula is taking special care of his crops and keeping a watchful eye on his contest corn. With only one chance to get it right, he evaluates the mixtures to make sure everything is perfect. Micronutrients play an important role in feeding the crops. David has to provide just the right nutrients to give his corn the best chance for a healthy stand. The plan now is we're putting a little bit of micronutrients out just to try to get the plant, you know, balanced. Because if you look at the crop right now, it's not the prettiest looking crop because we've had all this wet weather. If I don't shut the water off, we're going to have a big mess. Don't want to overfill. Because a uh, pump can pump faster than I can fill the sprayer. I got to fill this thing up five times. So if I don't write down just a scratch through the dirt or something, phone a ring, Randy will call me, or Kevin will call, or Dan, or. Oh, look, sprayer blight. Oh, look. Boom. There it is. Dead. You know, as at West Point, and they tell those stories of like the cadets at West Point, like spilled the salt, and like, oh, you killed your whole platoon. It's kind of like this: dead, 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 all dead. Platoon of dead soldiers, right there, killed them all. Defense Department, we request inform you that your sons are dead because they were stupid. Red light. Oh boy. Are you ready to rock and roll? So we got some severe sprayer blight here. Yeah, we gotta do a better job. Curve's getting here every time. No, I'm not turning around. There'll be more sprayer blight. We're hammering it out. Hopefully, eventually, the product will start coming out of the booms. There we go. This is the field in which we typically put a corn hybrid plot when we have corn in this farm. And we did this year. So we planted everything except for this particular field and we saved this field for one of the last ones just so we could get the production corn planted. It takes time to plant these hybrid plots, but we probably got 70 or 80 different corn hybrids out here. We had some wet weather come in and now we're going to have to do a little bit of replant up here. So we're letting it dry out. And heck, they're calling for rain again tomorrow and some Sunday. You know, we've had anywhere from I'm trying to get my auto steer right. Fun fact several auto companies are scrambling to launch satellite guided cars. 
When did John Deere introduce satellite guided tractors? The answer is 1999. And when you look out here, you see the yellow spots. And part of that is because we've had all this rain. We haven't had any sunlight. You know, when you get rain, you get cloudy days. So this corn has been taken a feet. We're kind of at that 360, 370 GDU. So we're getting dangerously close to setting the girth of the year. So what is it possibly lacking? And that would be sunlight. Well, I've only seen one picture of one ear that had 24 rows around out of a production field. The grower was a good friend of mine, Kevin Matthews, down in North Carolina. Kind of neat. Was I envious? We've had good successful corn with 16 rows around. Just because you got a lot of kernels around doesn't mean it's going to be high yielding. So, but yeah, I would like to personally have some 20 four around just to see what we could do. Maybe that's the hidden secret to get to 600 bushel corn. Stay tuned. This segment of Corn Warriors is brought to you in part by John Deere. When each new day begins, we are here. When you want new technology that's tested and proven, we are here. When you need a sounding board or just a good story, we're here. For an ally whose local roots run as deep as yours or to make next year the best year yet, we'll be where we've been all along. With you from the word go. We're gonna go down and uh, spray our hybrid. We have what you call burr cucumber. We call them pickles. That's cockle burr. Here's a morning glory. Now this here's what we call sweet potato vine. Them don't hurt you near as bad. So here's a pickle. If you don't spray it, it'll come out, vine up, crawl up on top of the corn and just ride it down. The grass should have been killed last week, but we were wet. Well, one, it'll wash your chemical off. And two is that the ground gets soft and will either tear up the field or get hung up. So, you know, it ain't really worth tearing everything up to get into it. Hey, look at there, deer, buck. Now we had some cutworm. I had to spray this field in that field up there, but it wasn't near the damage we had in our hybrid plot. 20 some years I've been farming, we've never dealt with cutworm for safety precautions. We went ahead and sprayed our contest field. I think our stand, as far as being even, will be more than enough to make up for what we had. Corn looks pretty good, don't it? I think we can spray today. Well, uh, the crown. You know, I think David's got pretty good locks on it. And then you got Randy over there sitting pretty good right now too. You know, I ain't afraid to say within a year or two, they'll be knocking on that 600 door. But the problem is I'm gonna beat them this year because I'm gonna have the 600 this year. <laughs> well, maybe not, but we're sure they're gonna try. We're ready to go get the sprayer. Kick some serious grass. So we'll go ahead and start filling this thing. Freaking leak here. You some bitch. Never had that leak. Last time I heard gloves do that was a very scary situation. <laughs> you know, this stuff here, we only run three ounces an acre. So to the public, you know, to think that farmers harm the environment, 
that ain't very much product. Now comes our sugar. About every pass we make, we run sugar. Kind of has always been a ritual. One, plant needs energy, we know that. And number two, it feeds the microbes. Every, everything likes sugar, you know. Kids, me, Mountain Dew. Uh, <laughs> so what's the difference? You know, the big thing is, I know whatever I mix dissolves. We've knock on wood not had any problems with their sugar gelling up or plugging up tips. So time is money and I don't want to sit there with a 1400 gallon tank, have tips plugged up or turn the snot. So Randy, this is the way real farmers do it. We don't have other people do it for us. <laughs> So our, our biggest victory this year would have to be dodging a big flood. So this corn here was underwater right through here. I don't know how wet this is gonna be. Uh, I don't think it's a David Hula smooth. We were probably a half inch away from being pretty devastating. First time that we got over it to see the damage and uh, we were expecting about 20, 30 acres of corn to be shot. This ground is wet, even underneath. Mother Nature's got to cooperate. You know, she don't flood us out. You know, let's oxygen stay in the soil, or we can keep our microbial activity. Guess what? It's a lot easier to grow corn. Now, this is the way we do it. Cut around this way, make two rounds around like this. That's what's nice about four-wheel steer. You don't really drive over as much corn as what you think. You know, we're figuring about an acre and a half to maybe two acres all we lost, so we're sitting pretty good again now. Our contest stuff really looks good. It's growing so fast. You know, last year from V6 to V10, it grew four feet in like five days. This is by far growing early faster than what we had last year. The very first year that we entered in the contest, we finished second and David introduced himself, you know, and he's about as modest as they can get. He gives me a little crap about John Deere every once in a while, but uh, utmost respect for him. Craig, my stepson. <laughs> oh, Barley, uh, he, he could probably do it. He's got a good teacher there. Like I said, I think David's taking him under his wing there pretty good, teaching him a lot of secrets. Maybe I can get him drunk and he can spill some of them. We just finished here at River Edge Farm and the Glencoe Farm, and now we're gonna go to the farm called Curl's Neck, where last year we had their highest recorded yield ever with Pioneer Hybrid 1197 at, let's see, 542 bushels. So we're gonna see if we can at least duplicate that in 2018. But here we go. They're talking for rain. They're not talking about any rain. I got rain this evening. It's a mall mine. Here it is Friday. What time is it? 3.38. Flat tire. No inventory. We'll get them Monday. <laughs> Have a good weekend. <laughs> That's what he says. <laughs> That's all right. It's all good. Hey. Hey. What are you doing? I hope you don't think we're about to change that today. It'll change easy today. Oh, hell no. You gotta go check and make sure we got tires. Huh? Well, you're going back, aren't you? I ain't bringing no tire back with me. Well, you gonna do it tomorrow? Huh? No. No what? No what? No. You really want me to bring stuff to change tire? I need to make sure we got a tire. That's what I said. It's hot. Well, they change easier when they're hot. No, I just need to make sure we got it. What size is it? I'll send it to you. And what do you want on the, the pickup? I need the germoxone on the front, the warrant on the back, and then I guess Jimmy was going to bring some fungicide, react on. What was the first one? Germoxone on the front. I got that. Warrant on the back. 
warrant. Yeah, with that hose. Yeah. You want a longer hose? That'd be too. Yeah, longer be better. And then um. <laughs> then. <laughs> you want me to bring you some scissors too? Cut them pants. Yeah, I do want these pants taken off. He said you're a corn star. <laughs> <laughs> you're funny. You are being funny today, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. All right, I got a spray. All right, we're leaving. Yeah, I might not want to put that on camera. <laughs> Great. I'm grateful to finally be back in the sprayer, um, but the heat is causing the corn to twist up a little bit. Not anything to be worried about right now. Kind of like, don't want to see stress, but I don't mind seeing some heat or a little bit drier weather because it forces the roots to grow down a little deeper. You know, we plant the crop hoping to get great yield potential and we need to protect it. I don't want my corn to get sick. You know, that's what we're trying to protect. But we just got to be proactive. Especially in today's economy. I don't know what the market did today, but corn prices aren't where they were several years ago. So our best defense to low prices is not saving yourself to prosperity, but it's to try to maximize in an efficient manner your bushels. So some of these products they don't cost but maybe a half a bushel to a bushel. And your ROI could be much greater than that. You know, we don't want to kill everything out there, but we sure want to kill the pests that are bothering us. And that's one thing we're focused on right now. This segment of Corn Warriors is brought to you in part by Pioneer. When each new day begins, we're here. When you want new technology that's tested and proven, we're here. When you need a sounding board or just a good story, we're here. For an ally whose local roots run as deep as yours, or to make next year the best year yet, we'll be where we've been all along. With you from the word go. No, it's too early to say what kind of crop we got. Every year is different. And our farming practices have come a long way. The fertility programs, you know, get this corn up and going so much faster than what it used to. Most of our corn between that 450 to 620 GDUs. We're down to about 200 acres. Uh, posting for our corn. You know, our nutrient management, we learned a lot last year. Applying too much nitrogen can hamper our yields. Finding a balance at the right time is way more efficient, and I think right now we're about as efficient as what we can be using the tools that we have you know, I don't know anything better than pulling tissue samples to actually see what's going on in the plant. Should be good corn, but Mother Nature's gonna determine that. I got a couple tips plugging up here. Get up here to get out. Kevin steps out of the sprayer to inspect the clogged nozzles. An issue like this could cost him valuable time, so he does everything he can to remedy the blockage as quickly as possible. Fortunately for Kevin, he has the right tools on hand, and it's an easy fix. In fact, I had some issues, not on our contest corn this year, but on some of our early corn. I called Randy and, and David, you know, and asked their opinion. 
I'm not saying we're close friends or nothing like that, but as far as growing corn, the neat thing about the contest has opened up avenue where you could talk to David and Randy. It's all about being a student of the crop. You know, you ask other people, because there ain't nobody knows it all. I don't give a who you are. It's pretty neat to, to say you can call the two world record holders and they're kind enough to tell you their opinion. By the way, it was two different answers. <laughs> That's what water does. See that corn dying? That's what happens when it gets saturated, loses oxygen, and it just sits there. So when the sun hits it, it bakes it. You know, we lose that microbial activity until the ground dries out. So we lose a lot of oxygen where those guys with the sand don't. Mud on the tires. Them big, tall, skinny tires, they drop like a lead sled. I really like tiling. Tiling's probably one of my favorite jobs there. It's expensive, but the neat thing is when you get done with one run and you start seeing the water running out, you know you're doing good. Our farm's kind of going through a total transformation with the tile, so we're putting more oxygen in the soil. Oh, this could be a mistake here. We're gonna go all the way up here. Little solved. Hit that hole again. Swanson would if he had to farm this. Lucas would if they had to farm. I'd say David would. I know Randy would. He wouldn't farm it. We got small fields, hills, rock. I don't just like spraying this, you know, we're sliding all over the place. Sprayer blight. <laughs> we're pretty good at it. You're in that tall machine on these hills, you, you get used to it sliding, but the most aggravating thing is you knowing that you're sliding on some corn. It's adapting to your habitat, I guess you'd call it. I guarantee you we got the most fields of anybody in the Corn Warriors show. So here's to you, Dowdy. Randy don't want to come up here. He might say he wants to come up here, but I'd like to tell him his good luck. <laughs>